Hey there. Today I wanted to talk about credit cards, not how to control your spending. That wouldn't be a topic I would know anything about, but rather using credit cards to get free travel via points and how they can be good for you if you're willing to put the homework in and play the game. And for me, I like free travel. I don't like paying for things and I like to travel. So free travel, obviously. So I've been playing basically the game with the American Express cards. There's some pros and cons to them. There's lots of different travel cards. There's tons of channels on YouTube that talks about the pros and cons of every different travel card. I'm not going to go into that because I don't know enough about it. I'm just going to tell you what I do and what works for me. And maybe you'll like it or maybe you'll use it as a reason not to go the path that I'm going. So I went with the American Express card for a travel card for not particularly good reasons. Uh, I was traveling to Denver a lot. There was a American Express Centurion Lounge that was going to open up in Denver. You need a uh, American Express card to get access to those lounges. So I got an American Express card. I'm not sure that's great logic really, but that's what it was. After getting it though, I kind of got into the point system of getting points for travel. And I've ended up with, actually, let me show sure, sure, I've got it covered. Three, let that focus. Three different American Express travel cards right now. The Platinum, the Delta Reserve, and the Gold. Okay, I know that's Rose Gold, but it's called the Gold card. So why do I have those three? And why three? Well, the reason is because they get you different values for different things that you're going for, and they are very complementary. There's a lot of overlap, to be sure, but they're complementary to each other, and I've been using them to bracket points to get free travel, and I think I've been successful at it. I'm flying to Ecuador um, in a couple months, all on points. Uh, my wife is flying up to uh, Seattle on points. I'm going to visit my son on points, although I'm paying to come back. I guess it was worth points to go see him and I w was willing to pay to get away from him again. Sorry, Thomas. No, he's a great kid. But um, that's just how that flight worked out. So they can be really helpful when used for points. And there's also huge bonuses if you're into the branded cards, such as the Delta Sky Mild Reserve that I have, using that branded card to get you higher level status on the airline. And I think all the airlines have this. American Express and Delta are obviously in bed with each other. And if you're going to play the Delta game and get hooked on Delta and try to get their status, having an American Express Delta card is a great path for you, I think. And I'll explain why in a minute. I'm going to switch over to slide, slide, deck, slide deck in just a minute for some visual aids. Um, United has their branded card through somebody else. American has their co-branded cards with City. I actually do have one of those because it is a MasterCard. And there are places, especially in South America, where I like to go, that don't accept American Express. Quite frankly, I'm not seeing a lot of them anymore. Uh, I use it almost everywhere. I've successfully used it in most places in Mexico and Ecuador and Colombia. But occasionally I run into a place that, that doesn't, so I keep the MasterCard and so I have the American Airlines card because I also fly American when I feel like being delayed a lot. And I have points on them as well. Uh, of course, if you're in Ecuador, you also might want to have some cash in your pocket because there's a lot of places that just only accept cash. That's how it is. But personally, I think that's been a little overblown. I used my credit card quite a bit down there. So let's go ahead and switch over to a slide deck and let me show you what I'm doing for points and how I justify the fees for the card. Okay, as I mentioned, this is all about the points. So uh, these cards that I'm talking about come with other benefits, especially the platinum card, which has a slew, a ton of other benefits, not the least of which is lounge access, which is why I originally got the card and might be worth it all on its own because the American Express lounges are great. Also get you into the Delta lounges and priority pass lounges all around the world. So that alone is great, but we're talking points here. Points for free travel, that's what we care about. So platinum card, pretty simple. You get the platinum card on hotel and air, so your basic travel expenses, you get 5X points. Spend 200 bucks 
you're going to get a thousand points if my math is right. That's great when you're traveling. If you're sitting around at home and you're not traveling, that platinum card's only going to be accruing you up one point for every dollar spent. Not bad, but not great. That's where the gold card comes in. The gold card gets you 4X on one of your most expensive items in life, rent usually being the number one rent or housing, should say shelter and food being your other major expense. Groceries and dining out, 4X points. Now, there's a caveat here. The store, restaurant, bar, whatever you're going to has to identify itself to American Express in the right way because American Express uses whatever credit card metadata to uh, pass through the system to indicate whether or not you're spending this on f dining and groceries. So the only way it does that is metadata. The vendor has to set that up right. Quick example, I go to um, a, a fairly nice place. We'll call it high, high-ish end uh, restaurant uh, downtown. It's uh, called the Whiskey Library. A little plug for it. It's a great place if you're in Portland, check it out. But it has labeled itself as a bar. Now its focus is whiskey, hence the name. But it's a, it's, a, it's a restaurant. You get great food there. But because it's labeled itself as a bar, it does not get uh, Forex points. So when I spend my card there, I don't get Forex points, which is too bad. I could probably be flying first class free everywhere if that counted. It doesn't. Um, conversely, there's some dive bar in Portland that I go to every now and again. I mean, it is, it is a dive. But it's got a pizza joint in the back. It's labeled itself as a restaurant. Forex points on every cheap glass of scotch I buy at that place. So it, there's no rhyme or reason. It's just how it's identified itself. Same with grocery stores. You go to Safeway, uh, Forex points. You go to uh, Fred Meyer, which is Kroger, but it's labeled itself as a big box store. One point. You've got to do your homework. And about the only way to do this is to you, you spend it, get your statement, see what it gets labeled at. You can't argue with American Express. It's just how they how they label themselves. You go to the you can go to whatever establishment try to get them to relabel themselves. Good luck with that. So you have to uh, just check check your statement, see what's getting you the extra points. Go there if you if you care about it. Everywhere else you get one x points. So besides that, you've got let's go full screen with this part. Um, let's talk about the actual cards that I'm using. I've got the American Express Platinum card, first card, uh, travel card that I picked up in this series, and I like it. I justify its expense by the benefits, not the points. I've said this over and over again, I think. So what benefits does it give me? Here is a sub list. It's not, this is not all inclusive. This is just a quick glance at it. There's deals coming and going all the time on this card, but these are this year, right now, these are the credits. Um, Hotel credit, you can get $200 and you get like $200 credit at hotels. You book a great hotel, get a $200 credit. Um, that's great if it's the type of hotel you stay at. I'll give you a quick, quick example. I think this is accurate. I might be mixing up two trips, but I was booking a trip somewhere. I think Quito, I, um, which is a town in Ecuador. I looked to see if I can find an American Express hotel and use this hotel credit there. Sure enough, there was one, but it was like 500 at night. If you know Costa Quito, I'm not, you know, not going to spend $500 a night in Quito. So I haven't used this credit in a while. <clears throat> to me, it's not worth it. It's zero. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that doesn't give me anything. Airline credit, use it all the time. Um, it's for bag check. It's not for the price of the ticket, although there are ways that you can make it apply to a uh, partial price of tickets. There's games you can play. You can look that up. But in general, this is baggage fee. This is food and stuff on airplanes, maybe Wi-Fi, depending how it's branded. Um, $200 airline credits, use it all the time. Instantly worth it to me. Walmart credit, sure, I'll go to Walmart. Um, I'll order online more likely. And is it, would I have done it if I didn't have the American Express cr uh, credit? Maybe, maybe not. But right now I am, so I'm counting it. But that's why I have a question. Uh, $200 a year and uh, uber cash yeah i use uber all the time that counts for uber eats too so uber eats uber travel i hate driving especially when i'm traveling you're in countries that have different rules maybe road guidelines i think is a better uh, way to define some of the other countries 
especially in South America and India. Um, I don't want to drive there. I don't get to conventions. I don't need the legal entanglements. I take Uber or taxis everywhere. Uber credit, easy to spend. Digital entertainment, it includes Audible, includes some others that I don't use. So that's why I, don't, I only get $100 worth of value out of that. Equinauts, it's a gym. Probably should use it. Don't. Soul Cycle, never even heard of it. Um, $300 credit, it's worthless to me. Probably should be using the home cycling stuff, but I don't. Zero value to me. Clear? Sure, I used it. Would I use it if I didn't have this? That's a good question. Is it worth it if I wouldn't have gotten it otherwise? Uh, that's too too deep philosophy for me. I am using it, so I'm counting it. And I have used it. I, I enjoy going through the Claire Alliance. It's fast. So all in all, I'm getting about $844 worth of value on this card without even talking about points. $695 fee off $149 value to me right off the bat. Then I get the points. This card's worth it to me and I keep it. Gold card. This one's easy. $120, $120, $240 in Uber and dining credits. You can combine the platinum and the gold Uber credits onto the same account. Again, I use those all the time. The dining credits, when you go out to certain restaurants, it counts on Grubhub too. Uh, again, these, like the platinum card, these credits are split out throughout the month, throughout the year, uh, some one twelfth each month. Um, but if you use it, which I do, it's well worth it. Get all the extra points for food and dining. It makes it a great card for me. However, it is a $250 card. It's a negative $10 value to me just on the face value of the card. That's close enough to zero for me. Uh, and I get it and I use it and I like it. Um, the hard part is convincing my wife to uh, use the right card when she's out shopping. Uh, there's a couple of different designs for this card, which this is one of the things that makes American Express fun. They have different designs for the card. The Platinum, they've got new designs uh, for the gold card. They've got the classic gold card look. But if you want the rose card, which is a nice, pretty card, you can get that too. And it just makes it fun. It may be silly. Well, certainly silly, but it makes it fun. Then there's a squishier card that was a little harder to justify uh, is I have a Delta Reserve card. There is one and only one reason I have this. It is the fast track to medallion status. Uh, you've got to spend a lot of money uh, on this card to get the medallion waivers to get up to that spinning value. Uh, for platinum, which is the level I'm at, the mileage qualifying dollars, the amount of money you need to spend on Delta is like $9,000. Or if you spend the, the waiver qualifying amount on the card, which is just spinning throughout your life, which is $25,000, if you can figure out how to spend $25,000 a year on things that you would buy anyways but do it through this card, then it's well worth it. You can save a ton of money on mileage qualifying dollars. You get, I uh, believe this gets you lounge access too, which you don't need if you if you have platinum. Uh, if you don't have platinum though, that's great if you fly a lot of Delta. So this is squishy. That's only has value if you consider medallion status valuable. I do. Um, I'm a big guy, I'm 6'3". I won't tell you the weight, it's more than it should be. Uh, flying in the Comfort Plus and first class and getting all those complimentary upgrades and getting shorter weights and lines, all that is meaningful to me. Is it meaningful to you? Answer yourself. Uh, I've got some friends that are that are tiny. Uh, economy seats are fine for them. I like the bigger seats. This gets me the bigger seats. It's well worth it to me to make my travel comfortable. So those are the cards I have, how I justify them, how I use them. Okay, welcome back to my actual visual look here. So as you can see, there's some high fees, but if you can offset those with, again, the perks of the card, it, you can decide if you want to offset them with points. That's perfectly valid. Um, I decided not to go that path. Like I said earlier, I only want to use the points for value add, not to offset the cost of the card. I don't think I can make an argument why it would be bad to use a points to offset the card. That's just my simplistic mental model where I need the points to be all free and offset the cost of the card some other way. Your mileage may vary, excuse the pun. Um, leave some comments. Let me know what you use. And again, I've not covered, like there's Chase Sapphire cards. There's all sorts of cards. I don't use them, so I'm not covering them. I only cover what 
I personally use, and I've had success with them. If you've had success with other stuff, make some comments. Toss in a video link that you've made. That would be awesome. And uh, again, you can Google all sorts of folks have all sorts of videos out on every possible credit card you can find. Um, these aren't the limits to the cards I have. I have other weird cards for backup. I never travel anywhere without like two cards in my wallet and two cards stuffed somewhere in luggage for backup. So I'm kind of a freak that way. I like to have spare ways of paying. And of course, cash. Cash is good. So that's it. That's all I wanted to cover. I hope you find this useful.